Welcome to this workshop. Uh, well, workshop, it's more of an open discussion where we'll be discussing all different things related to uh, COVID-19, uh, the pandemic which is happening at the moment, and activism. Um, we will cover certain topics of activism which already happened uh, regarding to COVID-19. Um, feel free to bring in any other ideas which I didn't think about to put into the little presentation. Um, feel free to share. Um, I think Veronique will keep an eye out on the chat because I cannot see it anymore. Um, and if you, uh, so if you want to add something to, to the topic I'm discussing, uh, well, we will be discussing and presenting. Uh, feel free to add um, your knowledge. Um, if it is effective, if it's a good thing to use COVID-19 to get the animal's message across, it's also, I, have, uh, I think, two or three points about that as well. Found in an article which was shared by Els, who is also on the chat, so she can maybe elaborate a little bit on that as well. Um, so yeah, let's dive into it. Um, actions which all which already took place. Um, these are two actions from two of the major um, animal rights organizations, the Safe Movement and DXC, Direct Action Everywhere. Um, you can see two different uh, things. You can see two actions, uh, well, four actions you can see, and two of them are inside places where um, Usually loads of people are. Um, it also happened, um, I think, a week ago, over a week ago. So that's also something we have to keep in mind while discussing this topic. But we have two actions which were inside where loads of people are usually concentrated. But we also have two actions which are happening outside where it's uh, easier to keep some distance um, but like you can see on the picture there's not really much dis distance between the activists so that might be a thing to discuss uh, so i wanted to open the open discussion about these actions what you think about it if you think it is it was a good thing a bad thing um etc Is there someone who wants to go? Yeah, Emma is. Um, so actually, I know just the one of Safe Movement in Berlin. The, about the other one, I'm, I'm not very informed. Mm -hmm. So basically, when the action take pla took place, um, it went like all around the media, like through Instagram and Facebook and so on. And like, I, I didn't think so much and I shared it as well. And like, w without really um, hearing about the speech and, and really like inform myself to, um, about the contents. And actually I went to it again in the evening and then I noticed that there were some things for which I don't really agree. For instance, um, like on, on one hand, I noticed myself some things. On the other hand, I got some feedbacks. And personally, I think that the language used, it's not very effective. And like I personally uh, talked to some friends uh, which who took place in the took part in the action and they said that um, also they were not really agree with like go vegan message and they said that um, they had some concerns before and the problem was that the signs were already printed so I was asking myself if um, we are not very convinced maybe about an action if we should take part in it anyway just because the material is already printed uh, or if the material is already ready to be used because I think that um, in such a situation also according to the feedbacks I got from my followers um, 
the perception of this action was basically like, oh, the, the vegan activists take any excuse to uh, blame people to, uh, to be carnists, so to, to eat animal derivatives. And so just because the, the disease spread through uh, probably um, like because of an Asian market uh, selling like wildlife and maybe not very controlled uh, foods. It doesn't mean that uh, the, the food they buy at the supermarkets, uh, uh, it's uh, necessarily the, the cause of such a spreading. And so I thought that maybe um, the use of language here was very important because instead of kind of providing and suggesting uh, ways to maybe prevent um, the disease or maybe to, to give a kind of perspective for um, future safety and also animal rights. It just kind of blames people to do something. And so I, I don't think this uh, is uh, an effective way to make people really reflect on the topic. Instead, like if I put myself in, in the old self, old carnist self I was, I would be very irritated from seeing such message and I would probably just like be irritated and don't care. Like I, I wouldn't be very um, invited to look into it more, more deeply. So um, I don't know, like, it, it is very important to kind of spread the message that, of course, animal agriculture um, facilitates the um, development and the evolution of uh, viruses and bacteria and so on. But I think blame, it's not the right way. We should instead find more constructive and educational ways to like with the use of language um, to really let people understand and to make them curious about the topic and like to research from themselves in a, in a more efficient way. So I found, for instance, a post also about insectionals, which is basically an Italian um, group, like inter they are intersectionals, um, Pro anarchy against eco fascism against white supremacists like they are like um, kind of new and they they diffuse the post who Glenn also um, shared in in the group in the Facebook group in which they say that uh, okay animal agriculture is one of the of the of the reasons why this all happened but um, it's not the only focus. So we should not uh, fo fall in the, in the trap of single issue activism, but have a more holistic perspective. So these are my main points. So on the one hand, language, on the second hand, a more holistic and educational and constructive um, attitude. I will yes. pass to, to the next one. Um, next am I one. Still muted? No. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you, Emma. That was like really, really clear. I really like, agree with everything that you said, actually. Um, and I also liked it that you, um, that you brought up this point of even if uh, signs have already been printed and stuff like that, we should be brave enough to say like, we don't actually agree with that and we don't continue with this action. Um, I think sometimes there's maybe too much social pressure or something to, um, to say such things. Um, so um, I'm not repeat. I won't repeat what you what you say. Uh, but one other like addition, um, aside from that, it's not um, effective and not nice to to kind of shame people or make them feel ashamed. Uh, the message is also just incorrect because uh, going vegan is not going to stop this virus. Um, so it's you know it's kind of a silly thing. Um, and another thing that, uh, that I'm um, critical about is, uh, and I think people probably are st stop using that now, is the use of masks and other um, materials, because like, at least in my country, these materials are really, really um, 
uh, scars and and people and everyone is like trying to collect all these materials so even if it's just you know like five or six of these uh, bio suits and masks um, it just looks like you're using these materials that are scars for your vegan message. So it's just also not um, um, not a nice way of like showing what you what you do with these materials. So it's it's it really it gives me too much the ideas of um, capitalizing on a on a crisis and then you know like not in a good way, not in a not in a productive way. Yeah. So I pass it on to the next person. Um, just, um, Alicia said something in the chat. Um, I agree with you, Emma, that especially in this case, blaming and shaming is not the way to go. The other action campaign is also focused on the relation about animal agriculture and diseases, but, 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 but much more focused. And I think it's, it's using the current situation in a much more appropriate way. And then Emma said, there is sometimes a trap to do something just to do something without being critical about the effectiveness, which is dramatically important. So, um, can people hear me? And, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, who was the first person, Alicia? Yeah, but Mariana also wanted to say something. She put an okay. extra. Um, just wanted maybe to ask Alicia a little bit to elaborate a little bit on it. Explain a little more. Is she able to talk? Yeah, hello. Um, I just uh, was the action in Berlin was like one action, and they went to the streets with the signs go vegan and eating animals uh, equals COVID 19, and was kind of like uh, shaming and blaming a little bit, in my opinion, as well. And the campaign in the States about um, cancel animal agriculture. It's a whole campaign and they're doing a lot of uh, actions and they even go on going into factory farms and showing live footage from the factory farms. How it's, for example, the last one I saw was in a chicken farm and how crowded it is and how dirty and how um, it is the perfect environment for these kinds of diseases to potentially grow and mutate. And uh, they focusing in different aspects all uh, against animal agriculture in general. And this is why I think it's much more effective and uh, appropriate use of this crisis kind of. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, next was Mariana. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So uh, I, I agree with what Emma said and what Elle said. And um, to not uh, keep bringing up the same points, I, I would like to bring up another point that I thought about when I saw the Save Movement, the Save Movement campaign, which was when this campaign happened in my country, in Portugal, we were already on a lockdown. So going out was sort of already forbidden and people who were still going out to these social gatherings, I know this is not a social gathering, but it involves many people. The people who were going out were seen as irresponsible and not caring enough about this health issue. So I remember thinking when I saw this campaign that this might be seen by other people as being irresponsible doing it in the time of a global pandemic and uh, because this is a social gathering there's many people in there and this might be seen from people who are not yet within the animal rights movement could be seen as irresponsible as irresponsible because i also kind of saw it as irresponsible and probably not the best way to um, spread this message right now even though it does bring attention to the problem i think it could be it could also bring a bad image to to this movement so yeah that's it okay um just quickly want to ask can you hear me yeah okay yeah it's it's like with the presentation it's like not super clear i just changed a little bit with the what i can see from the people it's not in front of the presentation like the presentation is still clear 
Okay, ju I just switched something on my screen and uh, I wasn't sure if it was preventing the presentation. I uh, also wanna introduce something um, like what we basically learned from Extinction Rebellion. If you agree with something, you can raise your hand and wiggle your fingers. And it's really easy to see if people agree with, with stuff. So fingers up is agreeing, fingers down is not agreeing. This is kind of. So that might be a very useful thing to get like while people are talking, if you agree with someone to like, if you agree or not agree, to use that um, if your uh, video is on. Is that why you were going like this when I was talking? That's why I was going. Okay, <laughs> because I was a little confused. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I uh, just wanted to, I forgot to introduce that in the beginning. Yeah, but else I mentioned in the chat that she can only see the presentation and not see the other responses. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's for me, that's different. I can see many faces. Um, but there should be like at least a couple of ones, right? A couple of ones. But yeah. Four. Okay. Yeah, yeah for me, six. You can like drag the the place where you can see people's faces. You can drag it a little bit longer so it you can see more people. You can drag the edges of the square to see more people. I can see everyone right now. A beam says it depends on the screen resolution. And you can drag it over the presentation. Yeah, I just wanted to introduce um, it. You can still do it, even though maybe not everyone can see you. Um, but yeah, it's still a, a it's a small thing to do if you agree with someone. Um, it's not like really that important that you see everyone doing this or not. Um, I see most of the people. So if I see someone, for example, like not agreeing with something, it might be interesting to hear that um, the opinion of someone uh, and the agreeing is nice to get like a kind of vibe. And I was next. Go ahead. Um, I agree what has been with what has been said. And that also made me think um, that it's very rare uh, that you know which kind of science the actions would use just in general. And it's been oftentimes that like I wasn't agreeing with the messages. I just didn't know beforehand what what gonna the, uh, what are the slogans and um, so I think it would be good just in general let people. Um, um know the messaging so everyone can make their decisions before is just a point that i thought might be very um good to think of for the future Is there someone else? Dominic? Um, Elle said we need more democratic action planning. But um, that was in response to what um, Anna just said. Like that, I mean, it's I think something that I've also seen that we use signs in an I come to an action and there's signs and things are printed that I don't really agree with. And that's just one example or songs or whatever. So that is something in general that I think like when we can, we should uh, try to get more people involved in the decisions about the campaigns and the actions that we do. Of course, we cannot do it always, but um, when we can, we should definitely try to, to do that a bit more and, and also hear like different voices. Okay, Anna. 
Um, so I just thought of something. Um, usually you, um, you only learn about the action at the briefing when you're already there. But maybe to like, I understand that uh, some actions you cannot brief people earlier, but maybe um, when it's possible, it's um, a good idea to have like a call like this with all the participants that are gonna um, participate and you let them know a few days uh, or about the action and what kind of science. So everyone can make a choice like, this corona experience had made me realize that we have such a great tool like zoom where we can actually meet virtually before and discuss okay no more people that want to say something so yeah i, I do agree that um it's also the first time it actually really crosses my mind that um indeed with actions very simple actions like this actually um you can easily let like people co-decide on what the message would be or have like a discussion about it what the message would be um because we do know uh we've seen people um changing from not using um the slogan go vegan for example uh, i know several people who really have problems with advocating with the slogan uh, we will be having another discussion about this tomorrow at same hour as this started it's called rethinking veganism so if you're interested why people uh, go against it join that one as well um we'll have a little open discussion about it afterwards as well if there's need for having a bigger open discussion that will be one of the topics as well in the following week um but yeah, I, I I definitely think it's a very interesting point. Like Anna also said, like having a briefing, like now we see on on uh, our meeting about the action um, beforehand to like decide certain stuff. Um, like for example, what will the message be? Is um, there I any? Oh. Yeah. Sorry, just else mentioned something. She says she's working on a Google Doc with people to develop texts, which you're using in a campaign that's quite simple. Okay, sounds really interesting. Um, yeah, I think we touched also a little bit on, I think Mariana did this, um, about going out into public while other countries were already on lockdown, I think. Uh, back then, um, Germany, Berlin, and I think US, uh, California. I don't know if, if California is already on like lockdown or not. Um, it's not within my knowledge. Uh, but back then, I hope there weren't. Um, yet other countries were already, and it might indeed look very irresponsible, especially like you see the social distance is not really respected either. Um, so I think that's also one of the topics uh, which I, which was on my own mind when I saw. I think the picture, especially the left one on top is a really, it looks a very powerful one, I think. Um, I really like the optics used, uh, but then indeed the messaging and the situation um, with this pandemic, it was maybe not optimal to do it right now. But I really like the, orange suits, especially within the animal safe movement. I think it really, it's a, it's a beautiful thing to see that animal safe movement can have um, their color orange suits. I think that's a very um, optic based, a very um, beautiful, well, maybe not beautiful, a strong view, I think. Is there someone else who wants to share something about this or? Shall we move towards the next? Um... Else wants to say something? Yeah, sorry, I realize that I've already talked a lot, but I'll just say one more thing, and that is um, uh, um, something called triggers um, that we also might have to think a little bit more about when we do actions, especially um, uh, kind of dis disruptions that 
some people are just triggered by um, certain images or what they hear. Um, now, if you are just, you know, heard about the corona crisis and you're maybe old and you're already sick, you don't feel well and, and then you go to a supermarket and you suddenly see people there in bio suits and screaming and, you know, with masks on, I think it can be a very, um, um, how do you call it, fearful experience. Um, and that's the same what happens in general, I think, when we, when we go to, you know, like small restaurants or whatever. And I've done these things as well. Huh? But um, I think it can really be um, a trigger for people who have been in traumatic experiences or, you know, like maybe, you know, you go to a restaurant and there's someone who has actually been in a, in a hijacking situation or something, you know, like with a lot of violence. And that can really, really damage people. So this is one specific um, also example that could really have a, you know, like negative traumatic, um, yeah, trigger something in, in people. So I think it's something that we also in general need to be a little bit more careful about. Thank you. Thanks. It's a really good point. We are also working, well, Christine Puppy Dog is working on a open discussion about uh, effective activism, where we will be discussing different um, tactics which are used in, in activism, like, for example, disruptions as well, uh, vigils, outrage, disruption, civil disobedience, everything, and its pro and its cons, and if it is effective, if it's not effective. Uh, so that's a really great point um, for that discussion. Uh, so, yeah, thank you for sharing. Is and there Jose, someone else? Yeah, Jose Rodriguez. Yeah. Hello, everyone. So, yeah, just, I think that uh, I'm not familiar with these actions you, you are just sharing here, but uh, uh, from what I heard, I think that sometimes the, the message is too simplistic. And uh, I think that's an issue because, um, uh, for example, the, the coronavirus, no, we know that, of course, it's just uh, it's coming from the animals, but it's not more about uh, eating animal products is that is more about how this uh, uh food is is the way we how the the way we, uh, food is produced no so uh, uh sometimes if you go with these simplistic messages uh it's really easy to debunk them and then you lose credibility so uh, uh, that's my experience from uh, other actions you know that uh if we are not well informed, if the people that are is doing the action is not well informed and able to transmit the message properly, uh, you end up being uh, again uh, uh, simplistic about the idea, and then uh, uh, your message is 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 full of holes. No, so uh, I don't know how we can fix this because uh, of course some actions uh, you ha don't have the time to talk with the people, or the, and sometimes it's just only showing the signs and. and 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 it really uh, easy easy way, but uh, is one point to uh, to take into consideration you know, that uh, uh, this loss of credibility for trying to uh, tell something that is really uh, complex, like the coronavirus thing, uh, and try to summarize that in in, in a message like uh, if you go vegan, uh, we can stop your coronavirus. You no, know? so uh, yeah, that's my my two cents on, on this. Just gonna like raise my finger if I want to say something because I don't cannot use the chat. Um, was there someone else who wanted to go first? Uh, there was still Elliot, Emma, and Nella. Um, I wanted to say I think it would be good if we get people who aren't who don't do anything animal rights related to be part of the discussion on effective activism because I think like with the people who are like already converted so to speak I think we have a very different view to the people who we're trying to get the message to and maybe the people who we're trying to get the message to will have a, have a different idea of what works what's effective so inviting people who are not animal rights activists right yeah okay if they're interested 
Yes. All right, Emma? Emma Lee? Yes. Um, so I don't know, I had to join a little bit late because um, I was working, but um, I don't know if this has been spoken about already. I just found it to be um, maybe in poor taste to be using masks and biohazard suits. I know it has a really striking effect, but there's a lot of healthcare workers that are um, without these protections right now and where I am anyway. Um, and I thought it was really great um, meet the victims having to postpone some of their actions. We're able to donate the biohazard suits and the masks that they had set aside um, for those actions. They, they donated them to healthcare right now because they're so desperately needed. Um, and I felt like that was a really wonderful thing to do um, and sends a nice message in terms of, um, you know, caring about people um, and perhaps the, the greater good in a sense. Um, so I, I guess that was something that jumped out to me when I saw this that was a little concerning um, that there are people who really desperately need these things and maybe using them right now could seem like it's in poor taste. Thank you, Emma. Uh, Nella? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's more um, of a question. Uh, I want to say that uh, initially I shared both uh, actions of my profile. And uh, at the beginning, they seemed uh, okay to me. But then uh, I started thinking that probably they were too anthropocentric and uh, therefore not anti species enough, if you can say enough about anti species. And when I raised the issue with a few activist friends, uh, I got the collective response that uh, you are probably right, but uh, we prefer to be effective uh, than right. And um, in that context, uh, we feel that we're allowed to use uh, anything, even COVID-19, to convince people going, going vegan. And, um, then they asked me to describe an action that would be uh, not anthropocentric, that would be anti-species and effective in the context of the, um, of the situation we live. And I was not, I was not able to do so. So um, I would like to, to hear your thoughts about it or your ideas. Yes, this is... Um... This is one of the topics I've written down lower in the presentation as okay, well. Sorry, sorry then. So it will definitely be something we will be touching on later. But it's amazing that you're already mentioning this. Uh, but this mm -hmm. is indeed one of the topics which we can, uh, which we will be talking about later. Okay, thank, thanks. Yes, I had something um, to add myself. I think it was my turn, if I remember right, what Nick said. Yes. Um, Jose um, said that the message was too simplistic and that's one of the things where I wanted to react on. I think like what Anna said, um, having that discussion up front um, with multiple people can prevent a simplistic message as well because you have more minds to think about it and to think about what your message actually is gonna be. Um, and the whole team can actually decide on um, on what the message will be and how simplistic or how like advanced your message is going to be. Was there someone else or shall we move towards the next point? Um, there's no one else. Okay, then let's move to the next one. Okay, online, online actions and I want to share um so a video first for everyone to watch it's a video by direct action everywhere
Oh, uh, Alejandra says, can so anyone say something positive or something that it was good about these past actions before we move on? There's some on the, I already mentioned that I, I thought the optics were really great, especially the one from Animal Sapient. I liked the uh, orange suits uh, within their, um, their, especially the rebranding and going towards uh, orange, having a color. I think that's, that was a really good thing. Using the suits maybe in the situation wasn't, but I think having the, those orange suits uh, are really great optics. Somebody else who wants to share something positive? Um, Mariana? Yeah, uh, I wanted to say that um, even though I did fi find those negative points, I think it's good to uh, drag people's attention to this problem, the animal exploitation problem, during this time, especially so that can people that people can make the link between animal exploitation and all these viruses and diseases. So I think it is a good time to call people's attention to it. And uh, globally, I think these were really good actions to bringing people's attention to this to this uh, matter, even though they could have been done in a better way. That's my opinion. And then Micha says, could or did they use this campaign online? Like making Facebook, Instagram and Twitter completely orange with their message, making like the seven messages prominent in the picture so everyone could share it. Was it a question or a statement? Um, not sure. Like, did they do that? Uh, yes, or? yes, a question. Um. I'm not sure myself. Does, let me see, is there someone from SAFE here? I, I don't think, I haven't seen the messages on the main, like I've, I've checked up the, um, the Facebook page while making this and I did not came across the pictures which they were holding. So maybe save Germany or the local Berlin chapters have, but I don't think the, the global page used this. I don't think. Puppy Dog wants to say something. Um, yeah, the action was just shared um, by Anima Safe Germany, but not from the whole page. From the main page. Yeah, I I did find the pictures on the on the main page though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the main page shared it in the afternoon okay. or in the evening, I think, a little later. Yeah. Okay. But just the action, not the. Yeah, just the action, not the signs. Okay, no more comments for now. Okay, then we'll go into. Watch this video. The whole world's talking about the coronavirus, but do you know what's coming next? I've been investigating factory farms for 15 years. I've seen the diseases. You can hear the sound, but we have no visual. COVID-19 is just spread to human beings from a wild animal meat market in China, but viruses also spread to human. There's no. No, only the sounds. Huh. Okay. Um, but we see your slide online action. Ah, not anymore. Try to. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. So let's go back all the way in the beginning. So here we go again. The whole world's talking about the coronavirus. But do you know what's coming next? I've been investigating factory farms for 15 years. I've seen the diseases brewing inside, and I can tell you that COVID-19 
is just the beginning. The coronavirus spread to human beings from a wild animal meat market in China. But viruses also spread to humans from pigs, cows, and chickens here in factory farms in the United States. The overcrowded, unsanitary conditions are the perfect breeding grounds for infections. I've seen piglets with black and brown scabs covering their faces and skin, a sign of staph, an infection that can be contagious to human beings. And for exposing these conditions and rescuing animals like little Lori, I am facing 16 felonies and potentially decades in prison. Our government knows what's coming, but they're prioritizing profit over public safety. The UN issued a report last year indicating that over 10 million people annually could die by antibiotic resistant infections by 2050. And yet 70% of antibiotics continue to be fed to animals and factory farms. And the overcrowded conditions continue to promote viruses like swine flu and avian flu. So why isn't the government addressing this threat? Because the U.S. meat industry sends millions of dollars in political donations every year, insulating itself from any scrutiny. And the pharmaceutical industry was the fourth largest spender in lobbying in 2019. As a result of this legalized bribery, factory farms are not required to report the antibiotics they use. And federal inspectors are barred from making spot checks on farms that determine the prevalence of dangerous pathogens. That means there is virtually no government oversight of our practices that endanger the future of human life. So I went inside Smithfield to investigate. In addition to finding rampant animal cruelty, I found disease and drug use. Tetracycline, penicillin, and even Carbidox, a carcinogenic drug that has been banned in Australia, Canada, and most of the European Union. But even with all these drugs, animals like Lori are still getting sick. When we found Lori, her face was covered with lesions. We rushed her to the vet, and tests found that she was suffering from two dangerous infections. Emergency medical care saved Lori's life. But millions like her are still sick in factory farms, and our government is turning a blind eye. So when we blame China for COVID-19, it's front page news. Well, I think China is to blame because they're, the culture where people eat bats and snakes and dogs and things like that, these viruses are transmitted from the animal to the people. And that's why China has been the source of a lot of these viruses. When we look at the factory farms here in the United States, it's ignored or worse. The whistleblowers face criminal charges. We have the power to stop these diseases, but only if our government addresses the root cause. Canceling the Olympics in Disneyland won't stop the next outbreak. What we really need is to cancel animal ag. Please sign to support the whistleblowers and the right to rescue. Just a comment. Oh, comment from. Oh, where's my chat? Oh, comment from Alicia from the DXC campaign. There is an ongoing campaign where they ask people to take pictures with a sign and tag a politician they are targeting. There was a live interview with Priya at Naturally Cheyenne Instagram today if anyone is interested. So, yes, thank you for sharing that, Alicia, I think you said. Um, yeah, so I want to talk about doing, indeed, the online actions, what we think of that, um, some ideas, um, the pros, cons of this. Um, I want to address some other things in the videos as well as doing investigations or using racism, so that will be I discussed a little later if you have some comments on that um, but let's first talk about doing these online campaigns um, like indeed Alicia also said taking pictures with and cancel animal gag um, making videos um, with information about COVID-19 and its relation to um, to animal exploitation and what we think of that somebody has some comments on that First one is Anna. Um, well, I just wanted to say that it would have been good to put a trigger warning that there might be distressing images. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I was thinking about it while I was playing. 
I was like, oh, beat. I forgot that. But also, I think it's good when such online actions, um, like mentioned, that China is not to blame, that it's a um, worldwide problem. I think it's very important to highlight that um, in the videos because there is a lot of xenophobia. But I really like the uh, how they addressed it, and I think it's very um, important to speak about uh, the connection um, of animal exploitation and um, outbreaks like this. I think it's the right time to speak about it. We just have to be sensitive how we speak about it, and I think that was a good way. Just gonna say the like racism, xenophobia we will address later as well to elaborate a little bit more on that anybody else wants to say something are there any cons people who oh, nella uh, yes um i would like to say that i find this kind of campaign um useful in a way i i understand that it doesn't focus on the animals it, it focuses on humans and their um the dangers they face but on the other hand i feel that um the media um, are never um talking about um antibiotics resistance for example people are not informed in general talking with people around me and mostly non-vegans uh, they have no idea about it. So uh, I don't know if these kind of campaigns uh, are right in, in the context of um, uh, the fight for animal liberation, uh, but as informative campaigns, uh, I think that uh, they are effective. They, may, they make some issues known. And um, I have to also to say that I feel the utmost respect for people that put their uh, freedom on the line. So I'm not very willing to judge them, even if uh, I don't agree 100% um, uh, with, um, with the approach. Uh, but I believe that they, co they, they cover uh, this gap in um, regarding um, um, people's information. Um, information that uh, mass media don't do that's all patricia asks if we could have the link to the video please um, i have to stop scratch screen sharing for a minute oh, come on this one <laughs> Maybe we can already let somebody else. Yeah, go. there's a comment from Sibel. She says, for me now is the time to talk about the healthy part of non eating, not eating animals. In addition to the part of COVID, HIV and these diseases, people are realizing how health matters and want to, to take care. Does she maybe, she, he, they um, want to elaborate a little bit on this? Explain a little more what they meant. No, she says that's all. Okay. Anna wants to say something? I really liked in the video that he um, was referring to animals by names. Um, so um, he was um, making a point that they're individuals. And I think um, it's important, it, it, it is people are more likely to relate when we talk about individuals rather than just numbers. So I think it's um, also more of an anti-species message. 
if we throw things like uh, this in such videos, talking about individuals. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, and um, there's also a video of Earthling Ed about COVID-19. Not the last one, but the one that he did before. And I was showing it to my mom and she's like a doctor. <laughs> and I asked her opinion, what, what does she think? And she said that there were a lot of inaccuracies, like inaccurate information, although it was quite powerful, but there were inaccuracies. So I think it's really important that we understand the science right and make the correct information. Otherwise, a lot of people might not take us seriously when the words are just thrown around. And then Jose? Yeah, I really like the video and um, I, I, I watch also, I like this video because it provides a lot of information that uh, can be easily verified. So uh, it's, uh, it's totally the opposite of what I said before, uh, it's the opposite of this uh, simplistic message. You know, I think it has a lot of good information there that is actually true, you know, and, and again, people can go and check online that is true what he's saying. And uh, I watch also the uh, early uh, ad uh, video, and um, even though I agree with your, I think Anna was your, your mother, uh, opinion that there were some things there that were not accurate, but I think the idea was really good, and most of the things he's saying are true. And uh, and I think what uh, what he created was a video was shared a lot, and uh, and a lot of people have seen this, and even there is a there is now an article in the Guardian that is actually mentioning this uh, this video. So the article is called "Is Factory Farming to Blame for Coronavirus?" and it's in the Guardian. So uh, uh, thanks to these videos, uh, they can be more or, or less accurate, but uh, the idea is good, and they they create a lot of impact. Now. So uh, now the Guardian is talking about this actually. And even though they are saying exactly that, that uh, some uh, vegan actions or videos out there are a bit too simplistic, but they are raising this this topic. No, so I really agree with uh, this approach to try to talk about coronavirus and try to talk uh, about it uh, uh, with the science. No, and uh, and not in a, a too simple uh, way. Because it's gonna it's gonna create an impact because the discussion is out there already and not only in the vegan community. Was the article referring to Earthling Ed's video? Like, did they start? It's, it's in it the Guardian. It? The Guardian newspaper is called "Is Factory Farming to Blame for Coronavirus?" Uh, but yeah, but are they are they uh, referring to Earthling Ed's video as the source that triggered them to write about it? Uh, yeah, they they, are, they have like a link and they, they, they talk about some vegan videos out there that uh, are directionally correct, but uh, a bit too simplistic. And I think that they, they even include uh, a link to the video. Okay, and Jordi says, don't forget that doctors only know what they are teached by the government. Um, for example, when cigarettes were medicines. And El says Ed's message was removed on social media because of not being completely true. Not sure if it's the same that Anna talks about. That's really interesting. Did uh, else do you know that Ed removed it himself or that it was removed by? It, it was removed by, uh, I think this was Facebook or Instagram, but uh, okay. if I'm correct, you can't even find it anymore uh, on his page, but people have been, you know, like sending it around. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> um, the last time I saw it, it was under revi revision because um, it was said that it wasn't factually correct. Okay. Like there yeah. were fact checkers. Um, yeah. I think that's why it was removed in the end. No more comments at the moment. Okay, then does somebody else want to add something or shall we move to the next one? No, 
Okay. Next one. Investigations. So it's very simplistic, the idea. Can we still do investigations while COVID-19 is out there? Um, investigations, I'll explain a little bit what it is. It is basically going undercover inside uh, farms to document the conditions animals are living in. What is your opinion about this while um, COVID-19 is out there? Stan? I uh, think it's more dangerous at the moment. It's a very good thing that it happens because it shows the reality to the people. But um, it's harder when you're driving around at night uh, to find an excuse. If the police ask you, uh, what are you doing there? Uh, there's only so few options now to be driving around at night. And you can even uh, get a fine. And uh, in Belgium, it can get a prison sentence as well. So I think it's a very good thing that investigations happen. But I think for the moment, it's harder to do. Thank you, uh, Patricia. Oh, she was going to say the same. And Beam posts a link to the one which was removed, he asked. Cat. Uh, Um, yeah, it was just, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. Um, I was just going to add that I think there's just so much footage that we already have, and it's not necessarily necessary to go out and make more footage now, when we already have so much footage that we could just be bombarding the internet with right now, because it doesn't make a difference if it's from today or yesterday or if it's from a year ago or even like 10 years ago because it's, it's it's all the same still okay jordi uh first of all i have a direct point to get uh, because it's not uh, often because uh, internet is bombarding by it that people are still believing it so we need to do it continually and uh, things are changing uh, every time so uh and not only because of that but because every time we can film animals who are around it uh insights we can show that to the people again and again from every from other places and uh, my point that was uh, trying to make also is uh, i think it's okay to uh, still do investigations uh but not at uh, this moment because of covid but when people are doing it, it's just a matter of time for the next breakout. So every time I guess investigations have to be done, we always need to be careful for doing it. Because the, the next epidemic can, can be started in Belgium, can be started in the UK. We never know. Thank you. Uh, Alicia? Uh, yeah. Uh, I wanted to co uh, comment as well that uh, maybe not the investigations as we know them already, but if you live in the near area of some farms and things like that, I know, for example, in Germany, there's an organization, it's called uh, Soko Tierschutz, so uh, something like um, um, animal defending or something like that and they are currently because of all the corona and the farmers know that there's less controls and uh, uh, yeah less people who might be able to report them they're finding a lot of animals in really bad conditions even worse than they are generally and they are spotting them through people who are just walking by and see that i don't know there's a cow with laying on, on shit where it was not like this last month, for example. And then they're calling the authorities and they're also calling these um, organizations so that they can take care of that and look at it. So maybe it's not like the typical um, investigations that we used to, but I think this kind of taking care of what you might walk by 
can be also interesting to do if you are allowed to go out with your dog or something like that. Thank you. Yes, Mika also responded to Stan. He says, unless the investigation forum is within your house range. Uh, Stan wants to say something? Uh, yeah, it's uh, an answer to Kot as well. Um, so you're completely right. The, there's an incredibly, um, there's a huge amount of footage about factory farming, about uh, the picture we see right now. Um, and we all know that it's um, all as horrible as everywhere else. Um, but I, I notice a lot of people just wave it away. If if you see images about UK and Belgium, then it's not in Belgium, you know. Uh, and there was one inv investigation here with uh, pig slaughtery that they really used footage of uh, the slaughtery itself, and that really. Um, uh, that really got to people emotional and in the meantime the the slaughtery is, is closed people couldn't run away from it anymore because it wasn't their country it wasn't their city and that really helped the locality of the, those images so i agree the the images are there's a huge amount but i think it can still help locally just so people can't run away away from it Thank you, Stan. Uh, Emma is next. Uh, me? Yes. Okay. Um, I wanted to say, um, well, in this, I'm sure this is really not the right place um, to talk about this, but depending on which kind of activism, you could uh, take advantage of the um, safer online um, work so you can smart working do a, doing a map with for instance the different farms or um, places of exploitation of animals um, like maybe to do some future manifestations or to do some future vigils or also well it depends um, which kind of activism you do, but uh, to know actually on the map where animals are could turn out to be useful. So if I get, understand get... right, do your preparation. If you are an activist who does go inside places of exploitation, prepare your work right now. Yeah. Like prepare, make a map where places are um, and do that kind of stuff that right now so you can go and do your work afterwards and you can also um check like with a little guy on google maps a bit how the place looks like also from the outside just to imagine some ways to get closer yes google street view i'm gonna get quickly um in it as well that we will be having a investigation workshop as well. So if you are interested in how investigations are done, um, we will be having a Swedish investigator, really experienced uh, investigator, um, giving a workshop on the house and stuff. Um, and if I am right, no, I don't know it out of my head. It's next week somewhere next week you can check the schedule in the um, online group i think on saturday possible I'm not sure sorry possible okay next one is anna i think if people want to do investigations right now it is important how you present it or frame it like if people figure out that you went to farms during this time they can blame us for blame you for putting the society at um, risk because of biosecurity so you i don't know <laughs> there could be a lot of complaints that you actually did it during this time so i don't know maybe it's not safe to post it or say that it was during this time so i don't know just a thought There's someone else, otherwise I would like to... Nella? Okay. 
Uh, yes, I just wanted to point out that um, although there is a, a huge amount of footage from some countries, there is not from others like mine, Greece, who have uh, very few uh, videos from inside the farms. And that's the reason I believe we should not stop altogether, maybe pause for a while. And um, I think that the danger of breeding up, contracting and bringing out a mutated virus is always going to be there, even if COVID goes away. And uh, that we should be very careful about how we handle uh, everything, biosecurity, take every possible precaution and um, study very well the legal implications and probably uh, trying not to be found out. Thank you, Nella. And uh, next is Els. Can, can you put me in line as well? Yes. Okay. Uh, Els? Yes, yeah, I was actually thinking why not doing investigations now? Because, um, okay, in my country, you're still allowed to go outside with uh, up to three people. Um, so, I mean, of course we cannot do protests and stuff like that, but there's like so many things we can do. And I think investigations is actually something that is, you know, uh, uh, an action that is quite possible now, uh, but also taking in mind what everyone else has said, but uh, also as Nella said, like biosecurity is always important. It's not more important now, or it's not, it's not different now with COVID-19 as far as I understand it. Um, so that was my point. Thank you, Els. Okay, Glenn, you're up. Yeah, so um, the thing about like the biosecurity, uh, for those people who don't know, biosecurity is um, taking precautions so you don't bring in any diseases inside a farm or you don't bring any diseases out. Uh, so it's like what you wear, uh, stuff like this, um, that you wash yourself, how you act inside. It's um, I don't think we have a biosecurity workshop planned um, because there might be some, um, when you do it online, some legal problems with it, but it would definitely be interesting uh, if you could do some research on it yourself, especially if you are um, planning on doing uh, going inside um, farms or if you are an activist who go inside farms, now we see what can happen if you don't take the right precautions in case there is a pandemic or a possible pandemic inside a farm and you don't take the right biosecurity precautions, something really big can happen because COVID-19 also just started with uh, one guy who um, ate or, or a wild and or went to, a, to, to, the wet to the wet market in China, also started very small, but like we see now it's a worldwide problem. Um, and I want to touch a little bit on what Anna said in endangering public health and uh, if it comes out that you made the footage right now. I think um, we all know that it can happen, happen anytime as, a, as activists, but we have to look at through the view of the public. The public is really concerned about their public health at the moment, as well as our governments. So it might backfire on you if it comes out that you do it now, even though we know it is, no, it is basically no difference, but the perception of the public might be different if it comes out now. So that's a, that's a point I wanted to make. Um, there are also um, investigations which are done where location or um, when you did it are not shared. Um, there might be some discussion in your credibility if you do not share that, but that might be another solution to this to, if you do investigations, to not share um, when it was taken, but it might lose some credibility from the footage. For the moment, nobody else. Okay. Um, a little bit on the topic, but um, still something different. What if you go and rescue animals, liberate animals, if you can save a life? Does that change things? 
is that maybe worth more the risk or not? So I want to share a little bit. Um, this is a picture of, of myself last year where we liberated a hundred ladies. Elliot? Um, on this topic, I think sanctuaries is struggling enough to afford to look after the animals they already have at the moment. So unless you're financially able to support that animal, I don't think that people should be liberating animals at the moment. Can you put me alone? Okay. Uh, thank you, Elliot. Uh, Mariana is next. Uh, yeah, I think that um, if we're talking about like the situation someone mentioned earlier, that they just happen to live near the farms and see directly a situation happening with a certain animal that they are able to rescue. I think uh, that should always be done. I mean, if it's, it's always a good time to rescue animals. If, if you don't have to put yourself much at risk, I think it's still a good thing to do. And also if you can accommodate the animal in your own house or near your house and you don't have to go like far away to put it somewhere else. I think if these conditions are met, I think it is different. I think it is a good time to, to liberate an animal if you are able to. Thank you. Uh, Emma? Um, it was something about, uh, Aya. So I don't know how is the, liber the situation in your, in your countries, but at the moment in Italy, it is very kind of, there, there are so many restrictions and there are also many cops around. So I don't, again, I, I don't know how, how um, is the situation in the other lands, but here are basically doing so many checks. So simply going on the streets or like um, driving around with a car could be very risky. And so for you, Am I the only one where she's gone? No, she's gone, yeah. Okay. I think the yeah. point she wants to make is that it might be um, too risky because you risk the animal's life as well if you're being caught. Mm -hmm. um, so with a lot of police, I think that's the point she was going to make. Yes, um, next was Anna. Uh, I wanted to say the same as Emma. Okay, uh, then Glenn. Yeah, so I want to touch on the um, sanctuary and financial problems. I think it's a very important point to raise what Elliot said. I um, also want to say that um, not always a sanctuary is um, involved in rescues. Uh, I'm personally aware of rescues where um, they work together with adoptive programs, so where um, basically, how to say, um, just regular people like you and me um, take an animal into their home, so that might also be um, something different, um, where, where if, uh, somebody who just, there are a lot of financial problems, so I think for sure I think always when there is a adoptive, uh, an adoption or when there is a liberation and the people who take, are, are gonna take care for the animal um, for a long period, you always need to check if, if it is financial possible to take care of that animal. It's very important to take that in mind. Um, as well, especially in a situation like right now where a lot of people, a lot of sanctuaries are in financial problems. Um, if you are going out to uh, liberate an animal, um, always check and, and plan up uh, beforehand where the animal goes to and that includes if it's financial possible for, um, for that place. Okay, uh, Kat wants to say something. 
Um, yeah, I just want to touch on what Glenn just said. There's um, an episode from the podcast Beyond Species that touches on micro sanctuaries and just how uh, sanctuary is just providing sanction for an animal. And they talk about how you can basically have a sanctuary in your house just, yeah. So if you, it doesn't have to be like an actual sanctuary, but like inside your house, you can have animals in that in itself is a sanctuary. That didn't make sense, but um, if anyone's interested, it's a good episode it's from Beyond Species. Awesome. Um, maybe if you can share a link of that podcast, uh, it's a podcast, right? In the chat. Um, and I think, Christine, if you can maybe make a note um, for, I think it's really interesting to do a talk on that topic as well. Uh, looking for someone who can do a talk about micro sanctuaries. Um, Patricia posted a link. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Patricia. And there are no more comments for the moment. Okay. Somebody else wants to react? Move on to the next one. Yeah, Nella? Yes, uh, I just wanted to ask something. Uh, I wanted to know when you liberate um, an, a number of any number of animals, um, how how you make sure that um, apparently these animals are going to be living with other animals uh, that are healthy. How do you make sure that you are not um, putting a diseased animal uh, in a group of healthy animals? and uh, therefore killing, killing them all at the end. I mean, uh, do you have um, specific vets that are willing to collaborate with you uh, even, you know, even if they do it under the table or, or something? Yeah. Because this is something that I have not liberated any animals, unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, but this is something that uh, worries me. Yes, I think this is very important to like, um, discuss in the investigation workshop as well, uh, but I'll touch on it very shortly. Um, animals uh, should be in quarantine if you take them out of uh, out of a factory farm where a possible disease might be. And um, I would always, always recommend to have a vet look at it. Um, but that indeed might also get some complications of finding a vet who is first of all specialized in farmed animals and um, is trustworthy. Um, mm -hmm. It is important to find one like that. And I think before you go and do something, you should prepare yourself again and also have somebody who can check up on the animals. Um, but that indeed might be a difficult task. Um, but I won't say it is impossible. Okay, thanks. Um, I saw some orange things popping up, and that means the shed, but I cannot see it myself. <laughs> yes, Elliot says at them, and Beam posts some marks, but I not. Oh, at it at them. Oh yeah, yeah. Glenn, you said they should look, take a look at it. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, thank you for thank you for mentioning that. Thank you. Um, Elliot wants to say something. Um, another thing is, um, I originally said um, about how if you can financially afford to look after an animal, then then that's fine to rescue the animal, but. Um, I also forgot to say that um, I feel that um, maybe somebody might be able to afford to look after the animal that they're rescuing, but at the same time, like at, at a sanctuary in that, their country, then there could be animals who at sanctuaries that 
people are struggling to afford to look after us. So I think like we should we should prioritise looking after the the animals who have already been saved first, and then once we've like got that under control, then ask me more. But that's just my logic. Thank you, Elliot. Uh, no comments for now. Let's move to the next topic. Um, using racism or xenophobia to push your message. Um, so like we see, <laughs> we see, we saw in the video as well that they address um, certain politicians who uh, made racist comments um, and it might gain some extra support but for your own message. But how do we feel about using those examples to push our message more onto other people? Or maybe also in like a broader topic about using um, racism or xenophobia to push your message. Jordi? Racism to put a message forward is never good. Never put racism above anything else because we're al already fighting for anti racism. So why, why will we actually use any kind of racism, uh, racist message to to push it forward? It's 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 against us. It's actually against ourselves. So it's not done. Thank you. Um, else is next. Yeah, um, thanks for bringing this up, uh, Glenn. Um, I think, however, when you ask people, should we use racism to push our message? Like everyone will say we shouldn't do it uh, because everyone is against racism. But if we look at the reality, we see a lot of um, racism in our messages. So, um, so we, we, we also have to be careful, you know, like, kind of micro micro racism or like you know like small um racist comments or sexism that i see actually every day i see something racist or sexist in my facebook uh feed um so we have to be like more careful with this and the other thing is um also be careful not that we don't spread these messages ourselves because that's also happens a lot and we actually uh, do something against it. So when we see racism, racism, we call it out. We tell this person like, this is a racist comment because that and that, and please yes. remove this message. And you know, like, and then, uh, and you can also report it at Facebook. So do also something about it. Thanks. Thank you, Can you put me in line? Yes. Uh, ben is next. I call, kind of understood it a bit differently. Are you saying, how about using racism to push our message? Or are you saying, let's use racism that exists as an example of what not to do, comparing it to our struggle? I didn't get that. It can be, it can be discussed in both ways. Right, because, well, neither actually works for me. I mean, you can, you can slowly draw the parallel. I, I, it did happen a few times during outreach, but I can't imagine just pushing out, hey, this, this looks like racism, let's not do it, because people are not as sensitive about racism as they are about... Uh, the struggle for animals. So I can't imagine that people uh, will accept it uh, easily if you just push it like that. But the parallels are there. So just by making those those par parallels so subtly, it might actually work if they, if the, the people you are outreaching to get that that those parallels exist on their own. But pushing it ourselves, I can't imagine it would actually work. Okay, thank you, Ben. Um, Anna, you're next. 
Um, I did not really understand how you meant like using racism to push our message. Like, have have activists in our community have uh, used the COVID nineteen? Like, and can you give the examples? I was just like, are you? Um, is this just mentioning? Um, like for example, in the previous video where uh, DXC was talking about uh, China and that they're not the problem, is I think is that what you saying that is is that wrong to even talk about racism in the videos or like I think it's so important to mention that it's not China problem but worldwide problem to prevent people being racist? Yes, yeah, so it, it can be in both ways. Um, the point I wanted to make, uh, why I said I wanted to go online is to give an example as well uh, from someone who made a very racist post uh, to push the animal's message. Um, I'll get to that later. But what I wanted to, to discuss is both ways as well. I think everybody agrees that making a racist post to push the animal message is not right. Well, I hope everybody <laughs> um, agrees with that. Um, but also, um, like I like one of the things I wanted to discuss is indeed like in the past video they used. Um, I kind of felt like they used the the racist racist. Um, other people be making racist comments to get more support from people to in the end get the message out um because i i think the goal of that video is to get people to link animal uh, agriculture to pandemics and i don't really i i do address that racism racism is not okay but my question is should we use racism to push the message of the link between both. Um, I think it should be addressed, but should we use that to push our message or should we address that in another topic? You know? If I'm, okay. I don't know if I'm like very clear about it. If people understand what I mean. Respond directly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I know, I, I, I understood what you meant. But I think if you don't mention that it's not China problem, um, people might find you racist that you're, because of you're not mentioning it, blaming pandemic or China exploiting animals. Um, and it's their problem. I think that's why we should mention it be, to not, to make sure that we're not spreading like not blaming additionally so um, i'm gonna give a direct point to that um i think there is another way to do it as well you can also mention one like it happens like they do we investigated a farm in the us and it can happen like these conditions the pandemics can uh these conditions can create pandemics and you can address it with like giving um examples of other countries as China to to make your point that it's not just China as actually using people making racist points to get your message across. I I I think it, I see what you mean, but I think it's important to denounce those hateful comments, racist comments in our commentary. Um, I, I don't see it as using, I think it's more supporting um, anti-racism. Just my opinion. Thank you for sharing. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kat, do you want to say something? Kat, are you there? 
Yeah, um, no, I'm good now. I've already covered. Thanks. Okay. Um, then Emma says that there is a big problem in USA. Trump keeps calling it the Chinese virus. Uh, and then next is Jose. So of course we, we should never use uh, racism to push our message because that's, uh, I mean, that is, uh, I would say it's even counterproductive. No, I don't think that is gonna help in any way. But uh, what I do, for example, just talking with uh, some friends the other, the other day is just uh, starting asking them, uh, of course they are not racist, uh, otherwise they, they won't be my friends, no, but uh, I start asking them, uh, is our Chinese to blame uh, for this, no, for the coronavirus? Our Chinese culture and what they, what they eat to blame for this? So I, I, try, I try to trigger the, the conversation. Uh, that's not using racism, but it's just uh, bringing this topic of what they eat and how they eat it and all these things, no? So I think that helps to, to start conversations about this with non-vegans that uh, sometimes they are a bit reluctant to, to talk about uh, veganism uh, because now this is everywhere. So of course they are gonna talk about this. You know, they, they are gonna elaborate if I ask them. And then once I started talking about this, then I slowly move to uh, uh, animal farming in general and also production of uh, uh, food production on the way we produce food in, in Europe, no? So again, it's not using racism, but you can, uh, as a picking line, uh, start uh, with, this, with this topic, no? And of course, I'm totally against, uh, I mean, I'm, uh, we should never do this, no? Racism uh, uh, is, is like, a, a discrimination, arbitrary discrimination no? in the same way that the specism. So uh, we should never use this. Um, Thanks. quickly want to make a direct point. Um, I think maybe a way to like improve um, the question is instead of asking if, is, if China is to blame, to ask if um, animal agriculture is to blame. Uh, and then you cover basically the whole industry instead of just targeting one country because now it it started in China, but it might the next one might start somewhere else um, It's just a little thing it's just a little little change in your question, and it might spark the same conversation okay, thank you. Um, Alicia, you're next. Yeah, I wanted to comment that, uh, like Elle said, sometimes everybody says, yeah, we don't use racism, but it's really uh, difficult sometimes to realize uh, because it's um, deep in our language and in the way we talk. And uh, in my case, for example, also I'm learning a lot every day and it's really easy to be blind to our privileges and to use metaphors and I don't know, like when we compare animal agriculture to slavery and topics like that, that can, can be and are racist. And I think we all uh, should uh, try to educate ourselves about white veganism and uh, ways that we, through our language can trigger other people and how we can improve this. And nobody's perfect, uh, but I think this is also something to take in, uh, in consideration. Christine, can you maybe also make a side note to find somebody to do a talk about white veganism? Uh, Kat asks if, you, Glenn, could give an example of what um, you mean by using racism to push it. Yeah, so um, I, it came to my mind because I watched the, the video we just watched. So there is a certain point where they show Trump and the senator, senator, how do you pronounce that word, of the US saying very racist things. 
um, and there, I, I like when I watched watched it, I was a little triggered by it because I felt like they were using this to gain support from people, to gain credibility from people, to push their own message of animal agriculture is linked. I didn't saw a direct link between that comment and the goal of the of the video and that's a thing where i was like slightly mm, i'm not sure if i agree with with using this okay then um emma um that's actually perfect timing so i really appreciate glenn what you just said and i think that um it's it's great to i appreciate how you reacted to it and i also appreciate your your viewpoint on it um but i will say also that that's all over our media right now i mean trump saying racist things trump calling covid19 the chinese virus this is all over our media so i feel like the okayness of using um these sort of remarks really depends on where you are um if you don't have a racist bigot as a president maybe it's not appropriate to bring that up but if you do um and it's one more ch chance to maybe speak out against that um i mean he from my interactions with people on online i mean granted this is facebook comments right so is that such a valuable form of communication anyway who knows but there are a lot of people who think that this is China's fault here. Um, I would kind of hope that the rest of the world isn't seeing that also. Um, so I guess I just wanted to give that perspective that uh, maybe the level of acceptability in terms of doing this depends on where you are. Mm -hmm. um, and that DXC being California based, um, it's everywhere anyway. So thank yeah. you. Um yeah I, I just want to point out that definitely like trump saying china virus and stuff like this it should definitely be addressed um but the point i'm making is should it be addressed within the message of animal agriculture or should it be addressed separately i think both needs to be talked about for sure um but does it need to be combined or does it need or is it maybe better to address the actual racism of saying this are using it to get your message across because it is trending. That's a little bit the point I was I was trying to make. Thank you. Guess, sorry. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> just that it's so prevalent, it doesn't feel contrived and it doesn't feel like they necessarily picked it out of like to me, I guess it, but it is a difference of perspective. Like it doesn't feel like they were necessarily using it. It was almost like they had to address that to be able to get through to any of his supporters. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. But I totally see what you're saying. Also. Yeah, I, I definitely yeah. think they didn't do it on, on like with attention. I, 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 I know, I personally know pe the, the people from Dixie Berkeley and mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure they did not do it with attention. Uh, but right. it might, because it's so normalized to do it, mm -hmm. I like I when I saw it, I, it came to my mind. It probably didn't came to their mind, um, right? But I'm 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 like thinking to like maybe reach out to one of the people and address it uh, mm -hmm. to like maybe get another view of of um, give them another view of using this um, in their video. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Jose is next. Uh, no, sorry. I'm good. Thanks. Okay. okay thanks. Uh, Elliot. Um, I just wanted to say earlier, Glenn, when you suggested that instead of saying is China to blame that you say is animal agriculture to blame. And I was thinking you could go one step further in terms of making the question open and just say, like, what do you think is the cause of COVID-19?
Okay, no more comments for the moment. Okay, just want to give a little moment if somebody else has some comments on that. No? Okay, and then we're going to move. Uh, this comes out of an article else shared with me earlier, and I shared it in the um, in the Facebook event as well, and I found it very interesting. I think Nella also, is it this one? Yes. No? Yes, I think Nella addressed this earlier as well. Um, so I'll read it. Many groups and individuals of the anti-speciesist movement groups and individuals are very often used to take to taking advantage, advantage of anthropocentric questions in order to intensify the vegan or anti-speciesist credibility, depreciating their truly good intentions and turning them into a vegan propaganda or misinformation. Manipul manipulating anthropocentric issues as a coronavirus one produces campaigns based on misinformation and runs the risk of being counterproductive strategy, causing a lot of credibility for this movement. Are there some... I just have a question, where is this from? Um, it's called it's Insectionals. Yeah, maybe else can link it in the chat if she has a link to it yes i'll do that stan wants to say something uh yeah so the way you um bring a message to people is important like we talked to about racism it's important that you're not um hateful in your speech because your message becomes hateful then um, but this, uh, to me, it goes, um, it's about, is the message um, true? So do you have sources? Do you have truth behind what you're saying? And for me, it's very simple. If you bring a message and it's based on evidence and based on science, then, um, and it's not hateful, then it's okay. Then people can throw arguments to your head and say you're wrong, that's not true, and then you just show the evidence and then... Yeah, that shuts them up. Thank you. Is that maybe, because uh, it might not be clear for an, everyone, anthro, anthropocism, I think it's called. Um, it's, um, it basically means, um, correct me if I'm wrong, like looking through it from like a human point of view, like putting the human central, in it, um, correct me if I'm wrong, or if somebody else has a better explanation for it. Elliot uh, says, placing humans at the center of something, giving preference to humans above all other considerations. Yes, exactly. Just to clarify that for people who might not know what it mean, means, because it is um, a difficult word. Okay, next is Jose. So I think I'm gonna link a little bit what, uh, with what I said in the beginning that uh, we need to be careful with uh, what we say and not try to be too simplistic and all this because uh, I think that the reality of uh, speciesism is already so horrible and so brutal that we don't need to exaggerate. We don't need to make up things, not to, to transmit our message. So we only need to be uh, clear, uh, uh, exposing the, the reality, you No, know? So that's why uh, I can understand some people that they are really passionate and they, they, they would try to push veganism at all costs or using everything, but uh, I don't. I don't know if they realize that uh, that's really not helping. Or at least that's my my point of view. And again, because I really think that we don't need to go that far. Only just uh, showing things the way they are uh, should be enough to 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 someone that is willing to change, uh, uh, do the connection connection uh, connection uh, and change. No, if someone is not gonna change he or she will not change uh, 
uh, with it, if it's not changing already with it, with the reality that is horrible, it will not change us with the push reality. That's what I'm trying to say. No? But I, I would not agree with this thing that, uh, uh, that uh, this coronavirus is an anthropocentric issue, no? Because I think that uh, there is a clear link uh, and it's, it's impacting humans, of course, but there is a clear, uh, a clear link of what's the reason behind. And w I think we can uh, explain that, no? And, and, and show that to people so that, uh, so they can just uh, uh, be aware uh, why this, this is happening, no? Okay, thank you, Jose. Uh, I just want to jump in. I see it's five, 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 five past nine, which means um, usually on the event it said it will be over. So if you need to leave, um, no problem. We will be posting a summary of this discussion afterwards as well. So you can always um, read what is going to happen what we're going to discuss next and what points are going to come up so if you need do need to leave that's not not a problem thank you for being here for joining for giving your opinion it is really appreciated i really think it's really important to have this discussions especially this one at this very moment uh it might actually in my opinion should have happened earlier even um but it's happening now, so uh, we can only do what is in the in the present moment. Um, so we are doing it now. So I want to thank you all for participating in this. And if you have to leave, no worries. If you can stay, please stay. Because I think we, the points I'm making, I think I have one more, and then we go uh, towards other points if people still have uh, points. Okay. Um... I think Nella wants to say something. Yes, uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, anthropocentric is uh, indeed putting uh, humans at the center. It's a Greek word. That was uh, that why it was easy for me. And the second point I want to make is that I think that in order to answer that particular question, we have to answer if it is useful for the animals, the non-human animals, to make people vegan out of fear for their lives, for example, because of COVID or other viruses, even if those vegans um, are not anti-species. I think that this is the, um, the main question here, because all this um, narrative of uh, putting uh, the, um, the virus uh, at the center of the, uh, uh, at the epicenter of the discussion is because uh, these groups are trying to make people vegans out of fear. That's how I perceive it. Uh, so I think the, um, that we should answer if this is uh, useful for, for the uh, non-human animals. That's all. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay, no more comments, no more. Uh, anyone else want to say something? Maybe somebody, I think it's a, it's a really interesting question. Um, is there maybe someone who has a answer to that question? Um, like, should we um, fear people into, um, scare people into um, becoming a vegan or going towards a plant-based lifestyle or should we uh, focus on making people realize that animals actually are equals and should have rights. Alicia. Yeah, I think it's a really good point. And um, um, I think it can be useful. It's not optimal. Of course, it's better if people go vegan for uh, ethical reasons, but there's a lot of people, even activists, that when you talk to them, they didn't go vegan because of ethical reasons but for health or for environment or several reasons and this fear in this case could be one of them and we can kind of include it in health and during their journey being vegans they realize what's really going on and then become anti-specialist or activist or something like that so i think it's not optimal but it can be 
a step in between. And also another point that I wanted to make is that um, it's also really hard to see when you're doing something anthropocentric or when you're, for example, talking about animals and giving them human qualities and through these human qualities worth, like when people say, yeah, but pigs, they are smart as a dog or they're so smart like a four year old uh, child and uh, these kind of uh, comments that we hear often during outreach conversations, I would say. And this is also anthropocentric and uh, a difficult topic. And I wanted to say something else, but I forgot. So I'll just pass to the next one. <laughs> I think Jordi is next. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if it's a direct point, uh, but what I was going to say is that I had a, a friend uh, who uh, writes me this weekend. Uh, who was going to turn uh, plan based in the beginning because of uh, all the things happening with COVID. So I think it's very interesting to see people change to a vegan uh, or plan based lifestyle in the end with uh, Corona in the background. Okay, thank you, Jordi. Uh, Patricia? Patricia, are you there? Oh, uh, it's covered. So then, Anna. Um, I wanted to say that I think promoting plant-based um, is helpful towards people becoming anti-speciesist because it's very unlikely that somebody becomes anti-speciesist just like from one message or it's a process and like making them first stop eating animals gets rid of some of their defenses um yeah so that's why i think it's very important uh what else did i want to say and I think it's it's like um, not always bad to have an anthropocentric uh, message because we also care about our fellow humans and there is a um, climate emergency as well and I would like people also not to suffer as well as animals. So yeah, I don't necessarily think we always have to um, have a strong anti-species message. We should have different approaches to get people to the end goal. Okay, thank you, Anna. Uh, Alicia? Yeah, sorry for talking so much, but I just remember what I wanted to say. And uh, I wanted to mention the same, like I understand that we also have a, a climate emergency and that of course humans are animals as well. So we should include them in the conversation. And I also wanted to say that sometimes um, we have to be realistic of the society that we live on. And that even if it's against our own values, because maybe we are a little bit after this but we have to pick the people where they are and sometimes this is through uh, maybe an action that's too capitalistic or too yeah anthro anthropocentric but uh, if it's picking the people where they are and bringing them forward towards anti-specism then I think this um, should be okay thank you Thank you, Alicia. Uh, the last one is Elliot. Um, on the one hand, I see how fear could make somebody want to change their actions. But on the other hand, I think that 
if like something's causing you if it's affecting your mental health then i think you're in a it would it puts you in a worse position to be able to successfully make a change and continue with that change thank you uh, that's it for comments now glenn okay move on to the next one it's another comment from the same post the anti-speciesist theory and our options shouldn't concern many of the issues that animal rights activists frequently use to sensitize the rest of the population, especially frequent among these are health and environmental issues. If we, assume that, if we assume that these arguments may act as hooks to bring people to consider veganism, we also risk, as a movement, to lose the main focus of the anti-speciesist fight, which is dismantling the system of dominion and power. Should, hum should humans stop eating animals just because animal farming causes viruses or because humans have no right to exploit and eat other individuals' bodies? We did cover it already a little bit. Um, it is from the same article as well. Uh, but I, wanna, um, I wanted to discuss the specific point um, as well. I don't know if somebody else has something more to share about this because we already covered it a little bit. Um, um, Mariana? Uh, yeah, um, I, I wanted to say just not too long about it, but um, I, under, I understand this and uh, I do think that we should never lose focus of the anti-species message and the animals and that's very important, but I don't think it's necessarily wrong to attract people, let's put it like that, towards this this issue through other causes like environmental and health issues. I think those are useful things, but for us, they are, for me at least, they are a bonus. The main thing, it's the animals and those other things are a bonus. But for other people, that could be what leads them into this issue and into this movement. And I don't think that's wrong or that um, it's not useful for us because even people who kind of become vegan or animal rights activists because of this issue, they are also being useful for, for the animals. So even if someone is doing it for health or environment, or environment, can't even say this word, environmental reasons, that is also useful for the animals and it's also good for the animals. So eventually they will get to the animal rights part, but if they start on those topics, I think it's still useful for for this movement and I think it's still okay to to use these these arguments That's it. thank you there's someone else who disagrees with this who believes that we should uh, predominantly um, focus on the anti-species message and that health and environment is um, does it actually harms the movement or does not bring across the right message for someone? Um, Emma wanted to say something. I don't know if it's an answer to your question now, but. Yeah, um, I think that I am an answer to Glenn's question, actually. Um, I have found this to be true in one-to-one -one outreach um, where I found that it's much more effective to just speak to animal rights and not get so convoluted with health and environment because I think at this point in time it hasn't always been this way but I think in this point in time there's a lot of information out there about health and about the environment there's so many people that are going plant-based for health reasons and there's a really strong forward um, push on environment and, you know, Greta and how we have seemingly le less and less time to get our act together um, for the environment. So it seems like there's a lot out there for environment and health. Um, and I wonder, I don't, I'm not saying this is fact, but I, I wonder if we would have a more powerful voice if we, uh, which I think for many of us, 
we care about um, you know the health of people and we care about the environment but I know for myself um, animal rights is what's nearest and dearest to my heart and if I'm speaking my truth which is I think part of why it's so effective in one-to-one -one activism is because I'm saying what is true um, it, in the depths of my heart this is true that this is ethically wrong to do this to animals and calling it what it is and I think if we really for all of us that feel this way we're able to really you know instead of having our focus kind of spread out to really narrow it down and speak very strongly about i almost wonder if sometimes we're sort of diffusing our impact whereas we perhaps by narrowing that we could have a, a stronger impact um, if we have a very clear message and a very clear focus um, and that's not to say that we couldn't go and volunteer with climate save and with other you know environmental groups that are doing wonderful actions for the environment um, but to make animal rights mo strictly about animal rights. Thank you. Um, Alicia, you're next. Yeah, just one point that I wanted to make, uh, because before I said, yes, we can use these topics, but I wanted to say definitely it depends where you are in which situation and if you are doing an action where you are, I don't know, in a farm or if you are doing a vigil or in many, many situations, it's really um, for me triggering with people um, goes to these issues. And in these situations, we should know it's only about the animals. And it's not even about the activists, it's just about the animals and this is the only topic that we should talk in in this moment. So it's really for me about the situation and knowing when and when not. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to add something for myself. Um, of course, I want everybody to start caring about animals and to stop abusing them because of they love animals. Um, but I think the animals themselves don't care why the abuse stops, just if when the abuse stops. So for me, I don't care why people um, stop contribute to it. it. I just want them to stop. Um, I think Jose, Jose is next. Yeah, I've been just uh, asking to myself this question for a long time and uh, it's, it's not an easy answer, but uh, of course I, I would prefer that uh, everyone that go vegan is because uh, morals and ethics and uh, because I understand that uh, if you go vegan, uh, if once you understand that, uh, the moral uh, approach, then you never uh, come back, you know. Uh, if you go for healthy or environmental reasons, uh, uh, I don't think that's a, a certainty that uh, this person could at some point just uh, uh, start eating animal products again. No? So of course, uh, ideally, I would prefer that, but uh, we need to be realistic as well and understand that uh, that's not the case in many, many uh, uh, cases no so uh and now with uh, for example extinction rebellion movement that is a huge movement uh, worldwide uh, so we need to take uh, advantage of this so that's why for example i think this animal rebellion thing is uh, really smart because uh, uh, i was in london with the uh, extinction rebellion and there was in one of the the um, demonstration were like uh, 50,000 people. So uh, if all these 50,000 people, Extinction Rebellion, uh, they start just uh, getting informed about the impact of animal farming uh, in the environment and all this, and at the end of the day, they go vegan. So that's gonna have a, a, a big impact. No? More than uh, talking uh, uh, from the moral uh, point of view. So uh, uh, I think that uh, we need to, to to go with these arguments as well. And health uh, as well, no, people is selfish by default, no, most of the people. So uh, it, it works as well, no. 
again, even though uh, it's not ideal and maybe it's not a, a definitive uh, change if they go for that reason, but uh, it's gonna co convert more people than, than, than the morals. Thank Can I go you. online? Sorry? Can I go online? <laughs> Put me in line. Yes. Um, Elliot. Um, first, before speaking, I want to state my own bias. Um, since <laughs> um, I became even an activist due to ethical reasons, then then like my personal strategy is to talk about animal rights and then only I only talk about about um, like and then I spend less time talking about animal agriculture and and the health aspects of eating a plant-based diet yeah um and that kind of ties into what emma was saying about um how it's easier to speak passionately about what you truly believe in um also actually what i just said was slightly wrong because Actually, for me, um, like talking about the environment, then it's it's not animal rights related, but it's still like related to animals because, like, if the environment's being screwed over, then animals are animals are part of the environment that's being screwed over, basically. I explained that really poorly. Oh, thank you, Alia. That was clear, I think. Um, Mariana? Yeah, I want to, um, based on what Alicia said uh, a few minutes ago, um, she said that this really depends on, on the situation and what you're doing, and I agree with it, but especially when it comes to outreach, street outreach, for example, I do agree that we shouldn't be using these issues, health and environment, to hook as hooks for people into into this movement. But you, you can't escape them because if you focus an outreach conversation on the on the animals and the animal rights and the animal suffering, and you, you ask the person, so will you stop consuming these products? The person will immediately go to environmental and health issues and you'll have to answer the questions and uh, you have to to use the science that we have and show them that this is better for us when it comes to health the animals and also the environment so you can't really escape talking about these about these advantages so uh, i think they are very very useful for the movement and just like i, I don't remember who who said it i think it was very unique um the animals don't care if you stop consuming them because of the environment, the health, whatever. So I think these points are still useful. Thank you, Mariana. Uh, next is Anna. Yeah, I just think we're such a small um, percentage of people who really care about um, animals and we're dealing with the majority of population thinking it's okay to torture and kill animals. So I think um, if we just gonna only uh, specialize in anti-speciesist message is gonna be way longer till we are understood. I think at this point we should be trying different um, things um, that could get people stop consuming animals. 
but it's definitely very important to have anti-species message as well and strong anti-species message in the movement but also support um like other hopes to stop um people's defense mechanisms yeah that's my view thank you anna uh last one is brina yeah so um it was summed up a bit already but i still want to say that i think that animal rights should be the most important thing ever because i can say from my own experience we had a animal rights march last year um, and at the end when there were speeches um, so many people were talking about anti-capitalism and about feminism and stuff like that like we had one speech about animal rights and it was animal rights march and i think that like people forget about it quite easily because like there are so many things that we can link animal rights to like we can link it link it to like veganism to environment to um to health and of course this is amazing and i think it's just a bonus but for someone to stick with being vegan I think the most important must be ethics because like, I don't know if you go vegan for health, maybe um, in five years, they will discover something new and you will be able to be very healthy as a meat eater or whatever. And then no one will stay vegan, you know, if you will go only for health. Um, so I think, we should never um, forget that the most important thing is ethics here. Um, and yeah, that's kind of it. Thank you. I'm sorry, Glenn, I totally forgot you. It's your <laughs> turn. No worries. It kind of um, is to like everything we've been talking now. I think for me, I see them as two different things. I see one falling underneath the other one. So I do see. I see activism for a plant-based world or plant-based food system. And I see activism towards a anti-speciesist world. Um, I do believe that we can um, see a plant-based food system within our generation. I, I truly believe that is possible. Um, if we are, the question, I'm asking is the environment if we will make it, but um, that's another topic. Um, I see a plant-based food system. If I have to compare it to another struggle, it's like sexism. The woman's to like to have the right to vote as a woman. It is possible. It's been it's been accomplished within X um, amount of years, right? And I see the same with a plant-based food system. A plant-based food system does not end speciesism, um, but it is a step towards an anti-speciesist world. Um, I personally believe if we want to cancel speciesism, I, I believe the intersection with all other oppressions, with racism, with sexism, with um, homo and transphobic, um, Ness. And I do believe if we do not cancel, like if we cannot go to total liberation, we will never truly see a fully anti speciesist world. As long as there is racist, there will be speciesism. As long as there will be speciesism, there will be sexism. Um, but I do think that a plant based food system is another strategy within a speciesist. Um, activism, I think, um, if that clears it a little bit. And I do think that a plant-based food system is very um, realistic to fight for. And I think we can truly see this within our generation. Uh, but personally, I'm questioning if we will see a total liberation unless a big revolution will happen. Um, I am questioning if that will 
will be um, will be something which we will ever see. Um, yeah. And that's one of the things which I've been um, talking a little bit about lately. Uh, well, it's been a little bit down lately, but I've been talking about it uh, for a while, a couple times a while ago. Um, and this conversation really sparked it. Um, and personally for me, I find it very, um, a thing which I, I find important to share to people to, see the difference of a plant-based food system food system and a anti-species society or a total liberation society okay thank you glenn i'm next in line with emma s um first of all thank you very much uh, glenn for your intervention i I strongly agree with all the points you you said. Uh, I just wanted to put something on top of Jose of before, um, because for instance, I think that uh, environment and health could be trigger points to actually um, bring people in touch with the movement. For instance, I was vegan for the environment for one year and then I started doing activism with of course uh, anti-species with an anti-species group and so I became like vegan anti-species for, for ethical reasons so I think that we should um, welcome these people because uh, simply being with us doing activism could uh, be educational and constructive for them to truly understand the core so just as um yeah as an um, something to add thank you emma yes now uh, emma lee says i don't i do truly believe in environment and health also sorry if that wasn't clear but there are a lot of exceptions hypothetical and often backed with industry science but people can argue these points and change their mind about what's, what's best for their health and environment. And then, uh, Ben, you're next. I have a cat. Um, <laughs> within outreach, we don't get to be picky about what we outreach to because, well, the clue is in the name. We need to reach people and for us to reach them, we need to be where they are. Otherwise, we can't reach them. And sometimes the anti-species speciesist message is just too heavy for people that have, well, never came in contact with it. And then at least we have some other means of starting the conversation, which might eventually lead them to where we want them to go. Thank you, Ben. Very nice cat. And uh, last one is Elliot. Um, what Emma was saying there, um, as in Emma S, um, that leads me to what I was saying in one of yesterday's talk when almost everyone had left about how um, I personally th think that um, that people don't we should be inviting people who are who even if people are speciesist they sh or only want a specific thing we should still invite them to take part in campaigns and and do activism um because once they're like part of the not community because it's I'm not sure if community is a good description but you know what i mean hopefully and um secondly i wanted to say that if we do start getting 
close to a plant-based food system. I really want um, a lot of anti-speciesists to be involved because if, if not, then we could just result in a fully plant-based food system which still involves loads of of crop deaths and like the use of migratory bees in order to grow fruits and vegetables and well, all of this all of this like suffering of animals can still go on as part of a plant-based food system Thank you, Elliot. Uh, that's it for now, Glenn. That's it. Somebody else, give a couple seconds if somebody wants to say something. No? Well, basically. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I just, um, I guess I just wanted to. Um, I think it's interesting that we want to move a word, some of us, not, I know not everyone, this is a, a point that people have differing views on. Some of us want to move away from the term vegan and stick with more animal rights activists or animal liberationists. But I think it's strange to call ourselves animal rights activists and then talk about our health, right? The health benefits of being vegan. Like to me, those are very different things. Either if we're animal rights activists, I think we should be talking about animal rights. And that doesn't mean that we shouldn't go out there and promote health as being a wonderful thing or, you know, saving the world so that all of us can, all of us animals can live happy and free. I don't think that that's, but then we're, I think that we end up, my fear, I guess, in including all of these different messages is that we end up so much convoluted and people have no idea. I mean, in my experience interacting with people, they have no idea what veganism is at all um, because there's so many different things that we talk about, right? Um, and I, I feel like we have this opportunity now to look at it. And in my opinion, I think that if we speak strongly and, and with a really clear message about animal rights, Yes, I care about the environment. Yes, I care about my health. But the reason I'm here talking you, to you today is because I care about these animals and you are directly paying for their abuse. So do you want to pay for animal abuse or not? And I think that when we're able to say that really clearly, um, more people are able to, I, I like, sure, we don't have the little hooks of um, health and environment, but I think our message is stronger, it's clearer, and even if we don't get that person who cares more about the environment, we are more likely to get this person who really cares about animals. So we might not, I feel like we wouldn't necessarily lose number of people reached, like I don't feel like our audience size would change necessarily. Um, and I guess it's also a difference in culture where um, here in the States anyway, plant-based is everywhere. And I understand what Elliot's saying about not wanting to move into just more industrial agriculture because that's a whole mess. But I guess I feel like we're not there yet and that could come in time. Um, we do have an emphasis on local, but I guess I really, in, in my experience in one-to-one -one activism, I don't feel, because I used to, I mean, I know a lot about environment, I know a lot about health, um, and I used to, in speaking with people, try to feel out what they cared about most and then hook them with one of those things, right? But rather than, at this point, what I've been doing is just really clearly speaking to animal rights, and, and it's been much more effective. So I just, I'm sorry to speak twice on this, but I just really wanted to make sure that what I was to make some of those additional points. Thank you so much for sharing that, Emma. Thank you. Um, Is that it? 
No, I think um, Emma Lee. She's just went. Yeah. Then um, Sibel says we live in very different realities. And for example, when I lived in Brazil, nobody understood that I didn't eat animals because I thought it was unfair or that I did with them. But when I associated with some social issue like people who were interested and studied more about. And that's it for now for comments. Okay. Does Sibel want to elaborate a little bit on that or is the no? Okay. So then my points are also all covered. I don't know if there's any other points you prepare to cover. Um, we can do that now. Yes, Ben? I know someone who's absolutely not interested in being a vegan, but would absolutely participate in an anti-hunt campaign. Same goes for someone who's absolutely, who's a fish eater, but is absolutely against the mass fishing that we do. But would, so if a, a campaign would arise against mass fishing, he would definitely participate. So by not being as strict about who gets to be an activist, we do get more people in. And that makes outreach a lot easier. Thank you, Ben. Uh, Mariana? Yeah, I was going to add another point when it comes to the um, coronavirus thing, which is there's something that, that I've been thinking lately and it's really bothering me. At least here in my country, in Portugal, like on the news, all that is talked about 24 seven is the coronavirus and how many people are infected and how many people are dead and whatever. And there's a lot of shows, mostly news shows where there's a doctor or someone who really understands about this and people get to call and, um, uh, ask questions to that to that person and that person will answer and um, something that worries me is that I have not seen yet covered in any news or anything or on the TV the reason why this virus is out there and relating it to animal exploitation so I think as activists something that we could definitely do is put more pressure on the media and on um, uh, especially in the news reports and everything maybe send emails or call and ask questions to the people who are there to answer the questions and really get them to tell everyone, to tell the public, to tell everyone who is watching what is the real reason this is happening, what animal exploitation has to do with this, what science has to say about it. And I think we should definitely work towards that right now. And it's something that I've just been thinking about it. And um, I don't know, I just, just wanted to, to share that. Thank you. Um, and yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah, like, no. Um, I saw earlier a post by Direct Action Everywhere as well, where it was a Zoom call, and I don't, I'm not sure the exact context, but it was a Zoom call where somebody um, asked the a representative, a representative of berkeley so the city where the headquarters of direct action everywhere is located um if they uh, support and and what how they're gonna um basically support the reason why so that's that's exactly like mariana said like there was somebody on this call and literally asked a representative of a city what the city is gonna do to uh, prevent the next one, and um, if they're gonna acknowledge the link between animal exploitation and um, 
this current pandemic. Okay, thank you. Um, Elliot says, I agree that we're not there yet. I mean, let's say if a government agrees to change to a plant-based food system, I want anti-species. Um, oh. Uh, to get involved with that transition. Emma says, I love that idea. Elliot says, Ben has ex explained part of what I was trying to say much better. Emma says, I will accept reduction in industrial crops first while systemic animal abuse is phased out and after shift plant farming to more sustainable models. Um, Patricia asks if we could have the link to that Zoom call. It is on the main DXC page and I've seen it passing by in many Facebook groups. Um, I believe Priya recently shared it. I think um, I saw it on her, like it passed by my timeline because Priya shared it. Um, no more comments for now. Okay. Um, let me see, we'll stop sharing the screen. There is everyone. Uh, I can take a look for the post um, of DPC. So maybe even on the own page. Is there any other point um, or does somebody else want to say something? Otherwise we can slowly start to I just wanna say I have over 1000 words. I wrote over 1000 words. <laughs> So I think we have like a really good discussion. We had a really good discussion and mentioned like really good points. Yeah, Thank also, you so much, Dog. Yeah, also thank wanted, you. To, wanted to thank everyone for participating um, in this discussion. Like I said before, I think it is um, really important to have this discussion at the moment. I've learned so much from all of you um, from all of your points, all of your um, ideas, your opinions. So I really want to thank everyone for being here, for sharing their their ideas, their opinions. Um, so yeah, thank you for that. Also, thank you for Veronique and for taking the looking at the chat and co-facilitating, and for Christine Puppy Dog to make the notes as well. Thank you so much. <laughs>